Ladies and gentlemen, all who may fall in between, yes, it is me, BT's resident rebel rouser, the man who puts the juxtaposition. in juxtaposition, the host of I'll Apologize Later, I'm Mouse Jones. This week we got a guest, we got a super uh, important guest to me, somebody I look up to in this game. Um, but before we get into him, let's, let me tell you what we're running over this week. We're running through uh, Kathy Griffin, she's having a heart attack. We'll find out why, it might put a smile on your face. Uh, parents of Massachusetts, they are crying unfair advantage, why? because it's Massachusetts. And uh, would you let your main go on a uh, vacation, a little getaway with their ex? Would you? I wouldn't, but we're gonna get into it. We're gonna find out. Now, as you guys know, BT is going to try and put this uh, disclaimer somewhere around here. Pay it no mind. Why? Because I don't give a about that shit. Because I already told you. If, you. if I say something to piss you off, if I say something to make you feel all kinds of ways, guess what? I'll apologize later. This week, I want to shout out my homegirls over there at the Horrible Decisions Podcast. I was just on that. Uh, we had a great conversation about all things uh, defining relationships. So make sure you go check that out on their SoundCloud and their iTunes Horrible Decisions. More into more important things, people doing good in our culture. We got somebody, I, I talked about it last week when we had Schultz up here. This is somebody who uh, who inspires me, somebody who 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 is an inspiration. We have Kid Fury. Hey. Nope, all right. Thought I was uh, gonna get a little woo-hoo. something. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. That was just the energy. Kid Fury, I appreciate you coming out. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here, and I like what you're doing. Thank you so much. You shouted me out. I did. On the read. Intentionally. Intentionally. Oh, you knew you was coming already? No, I didn't know I was coming. (laughs) I meant to give you a shout out. I appreciate that. I know you've seen the show. We're going to get into these topics. Nothing new to you. No. You know, we're going to do our best to not be controversial. Wink. Wink. I don't care about that. Kathy Griffin Mm. is uh, ridiculing and questioning Kevin Hart about his lack of uh, addressing President 45 in his stand-up routine. She uh, specifically said, as a black man, you should have something to say about this. What do you feel about that? She specifically called him a Yeah, she she called him For Uh, not speaking up. Well, okay, here's the thing. I I actually have been a fan of Kathy Griffin for a long time. I think that she's hilarious, and I've always uh, admired that she says what she wants to about celebrities, her peers, and all of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes without caring about, you know, the repercussions of it. She got herself in some hot water when she decided to take a picture with a fake uh, severed Trump head. Right. And now I think she's, you know, back on tour and reaching out, trying to get some other <laughs> to be mad at another <laughs> comedian. It's right. like, first of all, talking about Donald Trump, in stand-up is complicated because he's always doing something stupid. So, like, I feel like it's already kind of a slippery slope when you're talking about including Trump in your act. I feel kind of odd about this white woman telling a black man what he should say, when he should say it, how he should say it. And, like, hey, you come out here in the wolves den with me, my because you (laughs) you black, and shouldn't you be pissed? Like... Right. Nah, sis. I've never been a fan of Kathy Griffin. I always thought she resembled uh, old carrots. For some reason, when I ever seen, I seen like raw carrots. That's accurate. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, just, ugh. You know, neither one of us are black women, but we've read and we are surrounded by black women. So, we, you know, if we look at, you know, uh, white white women's fight for, like, equality, it was on the back of black women. Their right right to vote. Still is. It still is. Right, their right to vote came on the back of, well, you let black vote, so white women can't vote. You feel what I'm saying? So it just felt like, so you got in trouble, and then you apologize. So you talking about somebody being that's first of all, I mean, not for nothing. Trump has plenty of black people around him that don't give a about him being Trump and being a complete idiot. Yep. So the trap queen of Calabasas is married to a literal Negro. Trap who stands for Trump. So it's kind of like, I think it's already naive for you to just think that because this man is black, he should be speaking out against Trump. But you don't really have the right. If you're if you're that aware of how his race impacts all of that stuff, then why aren't you aware that you are white and you should <laughs> shut the f- up and like not even be trying to direct anybody with black or brown skin to do anything like sh- we've we've been doing plenty of the work. 
You know what I'm saying? And, we'll and allowing you to jump in on the work mm-hmm. and then take credit for the work or ignore the work or fight for your side of the work and not give a shit about our side and all right. of that. And now you want for other comedians who are making more money than you <laughs> to like suffer because you made a f- up. Fix your own f- up. Jump into the next one. So out in Massachusetts, there are these two uh, black transgender uh, girls. Names, I want to make sure I say name properly so y'all see this. Uh, Andrea Yearwood. 15 and Terry Miller. This is terrible handwriting. I'm the kudos to me for being able to read this. But yes, Sorry. these two transgendered uh, ladies are kicking ass in Massachusetts when it comes to these relays, these 40, I don't know, hurdles, or all, all of the things that uh, the women run in, in all those events. I don't know what they are. Neither. Um, but yeah, they run, they do it very fast, yes. faster than their counterparts, which got the parents in Massachusetts, which you could guess what color they are and uh, got them up in arms and they're saying, well, because they're transgender, they should have to run with the boys. If the school is respecting their identity, then why are the parents, well, we know why the parents are, because uh, these black girls are kicking their ass, uh, they, they white daughter's ass. They thought that their daughter was pretty fast, so they ran up against some real fast people. Um, what's your take on it? I will just say though, you know, this just sounds to me like a bitching as well as moaning. Um, I can't, get into the science of, you know, bone mass and, and you know, thigh meat or whatever. <laughs> like, I don't care about that. I will say, though, what it does remind me of is, like, uh, white women who complain when Serena Williams consistently beats their right. ass. Oh, right. well, she's bigger and right. she's black and black women. Th- like, get good. That's what people Ooh. in video games say when you're it's like, good. when you lose, get good. Yeah. Get better than me. Yeah. Train harder than me. Be a bad bitch. If they weren't <laughs> transgender, it would just be because they were black. If it wasn't because of that, it would be because they always running from the police or right. they are, you know, they had nicer shoes. Like I just, to me, it sounds like an an easy excuse from parents who are mad that their kids lost. Right. And if it weren't that, it would be something else that you're bitching about. So yeah, let's point out the fact that these women are transgender and once again push them into a corner where they have to feel like an other. Like right, right, they're right. not boys. They're not going to run with the boys. That doesn't make any sense. At all. Read a book. In my in my experience, white kids can never lose, right? Or white can never these white kids can never just be wrong. Right? It has to be something. If there's a school shooting, it's he was a loner and he was uh, mentally d- uh, disabled, had mental health issues. If they lose, and it's because the, the 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 black kid has an unfair advantage over him. It, but these are the, also the same parents that are yelling, um, they don't like this participation trophy era that we're in now. So it's like, which one you want? Right. Like you got to compete. These these black girls got to compete. And when they go around other black girls, guess what they do? They compete. They, somebody loses. So if you want Becky or uh, Amanda or Ashley or Kellyanne um, to run, they're going to have to run against Andrea Yearwood and Terry Miller, and they're probably going to kick their ass. Get good. Try that. Just get G-I-T-G-U-D. Get good. Get good. I'm not the best at spelling. I'm dropped out of high school. But um, you caught me off guard. Caught me off guard. I got to be able to read it before you say he said it and threw me off. G I T, get good. Got it. Last but not least, Jada Pinkett on her amazing show on Facebook, uh, the Red Table Talks, um, said that or she 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 uh shared with the world that uh, Will and his ex uh, Sheree Zambino Zampino Bino, one of those uh definitely sounds like a mob wife last name. That's she where been I was. On mob wives. Right. Sheree, why are you not on mob wives? They need in a black woman on my wife. They could bring it back now. I'm kind of afraid of her. Or I don't know what I'm going to say now. But they go on family vacations together, not with Jada, not with Jaden and Jada and Willow. Zillow? Willow. It's Willow. Zillow's, Zillow's an definitely an Zillow's app. Zillow's an app. For real estate. Yes, sorry. Yep. Jada said that they all go on vacation together. It's just Trey, it's Will, and it's Miss Zambino. Pino, Miss Zampino. I am not with the shits. Would you allow your ex, or would you allow your person, if you had one, to go on vacation with their ex? Now, see, here's the thing. Yes. I can't compare myself to this family, specifically because I feel like Will Smith and his family seem like the type of that, like, get up at 8 a.m. and, like, have 
toasted bagels with honey butter and then they just talk about their feelings and right. they're just like it feels like a family of full open communication i really wish that they would both adopt me to be honest with you there's still time um we, but we, you could be adopted as an adult uh i think so i gotta put my i gotta put my bed in and that way like kid cuddy and <laughs> That's not okay. So what the question was about exes and go. Okay, so the, I feel differently because I, you know, the n- that have entered my circumference yeah. in the thirty years that I've been here, okay, um, couldn't see that being something that happens. And this is why I'm not dating any of you baby daddies now. But feel a little triggered there. Um, just saying. It seems like they have. Um, at least an understanding and a respect among everyone right. enough where that is something that I could see happening and everybody being comfortable and respectful and so on versus the rest of the <laughs> that simply work down at the <laughs> library or the courthouse or at the <laughs> fish spot and you want to go down to DR with show <laughs> and think that I'm supposed to be sitting here looking stupid. You're not Will Smith. You're not Jada. You're not even Sherry Zambiano. You're not none of these <laughs> You're not Trey, you're not Jaden, you're not Willow, you're not any of them. You're not even like Dwayne and Tisha. So why would I, <laughs> why would I be comfortable with that? I know when I read that shit, I said, oh, I couldn't get away with this. As hard as it, as hard as it is to have like baby mothers that get along, to, uh, to, to think that you're telling your baby mother like, hey, listen, going, going on vacation, me, and Junior, we we just, we going. Number one, she's gonna wanna know what money are you using? Whose money? So money from our house is going to you and this to lay up? It's number one, it's not happening. That's an issue. Um, that's Yeah, it's not happening at all. Um, I gotta be on IG watching you go parasailing and I'm at the house waiting for the next Real Housewives of Potomac out of here. Most of you are not the Smith Zambianos, Zampaninos. We, we, hey, listen, bro. We be lying. Just, we be lying. Start there. This week, I don't know if you heard, Oprah signed a deal. Another mm. one, right? As if she needs any more. Right. So, power moves are being made as Apple has reportedly signed a deal with Oprah to produce original programming. Uh, there's no words on how long the deal will be for, but it is a multi-year deal, and it will not affect Oprah's deal with OWN. Just during the last year, Apple has made more than a dozen shows with Kevin Durant, Octavia Spencer, and Steven Spielberg, Kid Fury, Oprah, the 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 Oracle, the entity that is Miss Oprah, another deal, another set of probably billions. I read billion. It had to be billions. Yeah, I don't see how it couldn't have been. Like, why not? I have my own billions. I, I have my own millions. Why would I come? Don't get out of bed for less than a bill. Because one thing Oprah did, even like any issue I had with Oprah, like she still opened spaces for people to tell their stories and do things like that. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna be, that's what I'm gonna be looking for. Like not so much Oprah-centric things, as much as it'll be her opening lanes and giving like the Ava DuVernay's, the, the, the Lena Waithe's, and the people that we don't know about that's doing great work. Do we get the Monique stand up? I doubt it. In <laughs> fact, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Monique runs up in a couple of Apple stores with, <laughs> so, you know, she's just like, do some random impromptu stand up in an Apple store and see if they try to kick her out. I love Monique still to this day. You know, I can't really tell a lot of what I think Oprah is going to do. I hope to, you know, personally, I would like, you know, Beats Bio, maybe Beats like bio. headphones. Okay. Uh, specifically, I would, with like I would get some. Oprah playlists already built in. Also, I really want like a VR headset that puts you in a Yonla Fix My Life. Like, just in an episode where you're not, like, the guest, but you, like, get to sit and watch her. Like if It I was a whip! Been in the room with oh, with Iyanla and Hazel E. Mm. It was a whip. <sighs> but that's heads up. Oprah, queen, goddess, benevolence, we appreciate you. Um, And I'm excited to see what you're about to do with all these billions. Not that you needed them. You got a lot. But if you... Um, if you think I missed something, if you guys want to let me know about a story, let BT know about a story, make sure you follow us at BT on all social media platforms. Also, make sure you subscribe at BT Network so you can catch all of the new episodes of I'll Apologize Later.
All right, it's time for one of my favorite. No, this is my favorite moment of the show, actually. Uh, track of Trash. Kid Fury, Track of Trash is just, I love music. So Sorry. I love to, you know, critique it, um, especially when it's not being DM'd to me on SoundCloud links. Yeah. So uh, please stop that for the culture. But uh, so this week, we're going to go into something a little new. We got my man Manolo Rose video for I Get Money. Hasn't been seen anywhere. So we're debuting it here on BET. Right here. I'll apologize later. I Get Money, Manolo Rose. Let's go. This is so good. It sounds like it sounds like it should have came out in like the eighties or seventies. It's yeah. so good. Yo, this is amazing. This is amazing. Manolo got another one. Manolo Rose just has this energy that is like addictive. It has been for me, for like all of the songs I've heard of him so far, it just has this great energy to it. I feel like Bruno Mars is probably really upset that he didn't get this song first. <laughs> the sample is like amazing. The sample's crazy. And it's so on time. It's hot out in New York right now. Like, and this is my first time hearing this song. I think if we're listening to it, I think this is the sample's crazy. And then you look at the video, the video got all the paid in full uptown aesthetic. Love it. He's in the red car, he's getting his diddy bop on in front of the band. I think, which I think is dope. I think um, Manolo always has a good eye for shit, right? Like he just has a good eye for things that might not go together and then putting it together, right? Like I would have never thought to put, with the sample and the strong horns going, to put the black band and have them walking down behind them. Now it really feels like theme music. Well, that was Track of Trash. If you agree with us and you think the uh, the video is dope and you think the song is dope, let us know below. Um, I don't give a f because I like it. Kid Fury, like, we gonna listen to it regardless. I genuinely like it. I don't give a f what y'all talking about. But if you like it, let us know below. If you don't, meh. Okay. Uh, make sure you follow us at BT on all social media accounts and make sure you subscribe to BT Networks on YouTube. And I like it so much that I'm about to put the whole video on my Twitter. So if you're watching right now, at the end of the episode, because I know y'all got ADD, so relax. Finish the episode, then head over to my Twitter, at mouse underscore Jones, so you can see the whole video. Now, on your social media, you run a very clean, cleanest, clean-ish uh, Instagram. Um, Which like, just means I don't post shit much. Exactly. Right. Um, but on your Twitter, I was able to find some good stuff. Okay. Now there's a, there's a uh, you posted a poll that you, you did about flats and drums. And uh, it came out 50-50, but you, you leaned on the sides of flats. I did. And uh, I need you to keep that same energy because I now think you're a terrorist. Okay. Uh, why, why do you choose, of all the wings, why do you choose the flats? I think the flats are, uh, they're interactive. <laughs> There's a lot that you can do <coughs> with a flat part of a wing. You know what I'm saying? You can no. really, like, snap and really okay, get into okay. there. Like, I like that that snapping action. And if you actually have the proper chicken training, you can get that whole bone out of there without really like okay. shredding the chicken up. Okay. Uh, chicken is chicken is chicken. I'm going to eat all of it. I mean, we're talking, if I have options drums, for which I can have. The little piece of the wing that you break off, all of that's that getting eaten. That little like Nike check mark Yeah, part, that's getting eaten. I'm eating all of it. All of, It's getting eaten. If I have a choice and they say, would you like drums or flats? Well, because I'm not a terrorist, I'm going to say all drums. Drum it up. Now, ben, people are telling me, oh, well, there's more meat on a drum than there is on now, a flat. I, I disagree. That's a lie. That's, it's a lie. It's it just an, anatomically, it's impossible. You know what I will say, though? I think that I prefer to date that eat drums because I feel like a proper drum eating technique is usually reflective of other things that are useful. Oh, how they get you 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 you're the co-host of the Reed podcast. I am. You got to start you got to start with the furious thoughts on YouTube. You are would you classify yourself as a stand-up comedian? Uh I have performed stand up uh a few different cities across the country. World, no? Uh oh yeah, world. the world. So talk, I will say yes. Talk. I've done it. I trained for it. I'm not as badass as many of my peers. Right, right. But um yeah. I, and, I would just say comedian. And you also are an actor. Netflix. Aspiring. Once no, again. No, you can't be aspiring. You're, you got to check. You're a professional. I did. You're a professional. Dear White People, season two. That was you. I had a cameo on Dear White People. Yeah, that was pretty great. 
I was in one scene in, in Dear White People. Yes, it was great. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. Very, yeah, yeah. And thank you to everybody who had me be a part of that. You <laughs> are awesome, too. Thanks. <laughs> More about you, Kid Fury. Yeah. You're, you're in New York City. You're from Miami, the 305. That's true. Now, with all of this success, you still... I'm not going to say down to earth because I didn't know you before. But you still seem like the, a very real person, the same person that we met, you know, five years ago on the first episode of The Read. How, how do you do that? I, I do what I do simply because it's fulfilling for me. I just like laughter. I like, you know, there's so much misery on an average day, especially with a Cheeto Puff running the country. A whole Cheeto Puff. But, you know, you got to, like, find your joy where you can. So yeah. I just kind of like to have, you know, laughter in my life and share it with people where I can. But, like, Fame and glitz and glamour and hype and all that stuff has never been something that interests me because I don't even like to think of myself in in that way. I just literally do it for spiritual, you know, fulfillment. And being able to pay my bills and wear MCM shoes is nice as well. Right. You're somebody who's been responsible with your voice. You've also been somebody who's... I, the reason I say that is because by you being you and creating that platform and not being afraid to do that, Obviously, it hits the fans that identify with you, you know, black women, um, gay men and women, the LGBT community. And uh, you guys were the first podcast I ever heard. First podcast I, like, listened to. I'm like, I am, I'm f***ing with, like, all right, cool. Like, what's, what's up? So before I heard you guys, just by proxy, not, not thinking or not uh, forcefully pushing any narrative, I, I realized that, oh, I am homophobic. Oh, homophobic. I realized that, okay, and not, not in a... I'm not gonna say not in a dangerous way, but not in the way that it looks where I hate everybody and it's like, yo, keep that shit away from me. But it was very much like, oh, okay, you gay, all right, well, all right, just take that shit over there. I don't, all right, be gay over there. Don't. And now it's like, why would, I, why would I not love everybody? Like, why would I not um, defend everybody with the same vigor that I would defend a straight person? With? So do, does that ever, cross your mind or do you ever think about the people that you're touching and influencing like myself i mean yes and no i would say no in a sense that it's not like a a thing where we wake up or we go into the studio on wednesdays and we're like today we will be the biggest baddest activists that the world you know like i i think that the read is about being human you know mm -hmm. and i don't even really f like i don't think that i was ever really in touch with the responsibilities that i feel like i have as a black queer man until after trayvon martin was yeah. killed because he looked just like my youngest brother same age when he died you know right down the street from miami so i was looking like okay this is like that was a community and a, a form of racism that I was not unfamiliar with. But something about that moment and and seeing how the country, specifically white Americans, reacted to it was where I was like, okay, we have a show where we're going in and speaking our mind every week. Like, we're going to say some real shit. And so the show is about being human. It's just about we we are flawed. We have no problem or hesitation in admitting that we are flawed. We talk about the good in ourselves, the bad, you know, the good and bad in others. And I think that really what is important to us are for people like yourself to look inward and ask yourself certain questions. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are so many Black people who are dealing with white racist people every single day and will say, hey, you know, when you did this or when you said this, this is why it, you know, can come across as racist. And the reaction is almost always an immediate wall going up. And yeah. I'm not racist because da 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 Like, sometimes you have to realize certain things about yourself or ask yourself and be honest with yourself about shit and then do the work to be better for you so that you can be better for everybody else. Right. So I think that that's kind of what the, like, those moments where we're not making fun of somebody's lace front or asking who Rita Ora is or whatever, like... Still don't know. But the point is, like, when we're, like, getting into real moments like that, it's really just about being our honest human selves and exposing how we feel about things and hoping that people from all different cultures and communities will, you know, digest that and really be better if they can't be. Tell the people where they can find whatever it is that you're doing, um, whether it's podcast, whether it's TV, Netflix, where can they find you? 
Uh, it's TV Netflix. You can find uh, the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, places that uh, podcasts are available. It's called The Read. If you can't spell that, then reading should probably be your first priority, not podcasts. You need words in front of your face. Um, Words mean things. They do mean things. Shout out to Crystal. And um, June 24th, I'm having a party at Haven Rooftop, 305 Live. It is uh, a spiritual gathering of (laughs) Miami energy. So come out. It's going to be a great party uh, function. Obviously, you're invited. Essence in July will be there as well. I Come say hi to us. And that's about it. If you feel invigorated to follow Kid Fury and you feel like you liked what he said, follow us at BET. Drop a comment somewhere. Um, and make sure you're subscribing at BT Networks on YouTube so you can catch new episodes of I'll Apologize later every Friday, 10.30 a.m. Can I specifically say shout out to BET actually having Mouse Drums with like a decent podcast on here like I'm only here because I respect this guy and his voice and what he's doing. And I think that this is a refreshing addition to your programming. Keep it up. Bang! If y'all thought I was going to be not ignorant after he said that, lies. We need that social. We need that everywhere. Put it on the TV. Matter of fact, play it during the BT Awards, God damn it! Before we get out of here, we got to talk about the L of the week. This is, this is, this is uh, you know, we're just being very honest. And uh, we're going to talk about who f***ed up. Okay. Um, first and foremost, the L of the week this week goes to anybody who planned on releasing any kind of music during this month. Because uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce said, no. Nah. nah. Mm-mm. Didn't Nas put his album out like the day before? Please don't walk me into that one because they're, they're, you see my producers? Something bad's going to happen if I keep going down this road. Okay. Um, but yeah, so anybody that's trying to release music, I don't care who you are. Um, definitely we don't want any music from Dragon Boy. Um, wow. Uh, we don't, we don't want that. Um. Oh, you mean Choosy Slaves, Choose West? Choosy Slaves, yeah. Got um, it. Dragon Yeah, we don't Andrew. need, yeah, Dragon Boy. That's number one L. This Beyonce, Jay-Z album, which a few people were against. I see the retractors now. I see you. I'm not letting up on you. They dropped a banger. Eight songs, all fire. What? Beyonce's the best rap. She's the best female rapper of all time. It's only been 72 hours. Get into that. Jay-Z barred you to death. They, and they need rappers like B. I saw somebody tweet that. That's not mine. No, listen. It's, I, I believe it. Find me. Who raps better than Beyonce? Other than Jay-Z. Cardi, you can have number two. Cardi can have number two. I can have three and a half. Well, who's number, who goes after Beyonce then? I'll decide later. Okay. Kid Fury, I appreciate you coming. Hey, yeah, thanks Appreciate for you, me. you know, popping up. I appreciate everything you're doing in the community. Appreciate all the work. Um, to you guys at home, I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate y'all. We've done this, what, six, seven episodes. And y'all been here. I appreciate you. We're going to keep uh, pissing people off and putting out good content. Um, BT, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, anybody I pissed off? From the bottom of my heart, I truly, genuinely mean, I'll apologize later.